Hello, my name is Sabi Elman. I'm the Associate Director and Curator of the Ishara Art Foundation. Welcome to Ishara. I'm going to be giving you a virtual tour of our current exhibition titled Growing Like a Tree, curated by Sohrab Pura. It is Sohrab's first curatorial project. I'm very privileged to be presenting works by artists who are showing in an exhibition for the very first time, alongside artists who are very established, and it forms a very beautiful and intimate exhibition that Sohrab has put together. When I invited Sohrab to curate uh, almost seven, eight months ago, I'd sent him an email with an invite saying that I want, I'm interested in you putting together a show Sohrab, but I'm going to give you three conceptual provocations as I invite you. These three conceptual provocations were as follows. The first one was, how can an exhibition according to you capture the different velocities in which images are traveling in the 21st century? And this is a question that really talks about different mediums in which photographic images are moving in, whether it's a mobile phone picture, whether it's a postcard, a book, a magazine, an exhibition, an artwork. So images are moving, as we know, and we're in that world of images. And how does an exhibition capture that movement and the velocity? The second conceptual provocation that I, that I uh, extended towards Sohrab was to, to ask him how he imagines an exhibition can bring together regional alignments, new regional alignments from the 20th century that are not based on political maps or histories of South Asia, but based on his own networks, his own journeys, his own practice-based travels. And that's how the, the exhibition was able to bring together artists and works from not just India, Pakistan, Bangladesh, and Nepal, but even Myanmar, Cambodia, Singapore, and Australia. And I'm going to be telling you how that happens. The last conceptual provocation was how Srovrab would describe his visual bonds today. A citation from Hito Sterel's uh, important essay called In Defense of the Poor Image. Hito is a, an artist and a thinker based in Berlin, and she's written this really important essay that talks about how um, right now the world is not just being shaped by artist images and important original images, but a lot of fake images and a lot of uh, low quality images, images that take the form of GIFs and memes and WhatsApp images. And so the world is it's shaped by all of these. How do we create our visual bonds across the so-called authentic image, the rich image, as well as the poor image, the, the low res image, the fake image? And so Zorab so takes a few weeks, thinks about it, comes back to me and says, so, Sabi, I think I have a concept. I'm like, so, okay, do you have a concept note? And that's when he sends me this. This is his concept note, what he calls a map of interconnectedness. He draws this with his own hands. It indicates individuals, collectives, publications, events that he feels are hit, form his field, form his practice. And I found it quite moving to insert this into the exhibition because it shows not very robust networks, but rather very fragile networks. I call them fragile because it's really someone lending someone else a roll of film so that they can continue their project. It's someone lending someone money so that they can go travel. It's someone accompanying someone so that they can just take their projects uh, to the next level. And that's the kind of fragile network of support systems that is cre being created by young and emerging artists from South Asia and from many parts of the world. It's fragile, but it's also resilient, which is a point that Sohrab made as I was describing this. And I thought it was a beautiful point because really this is a time of great fragility, but also great resilience, and the artists are really showing us this. Growing Like a Tree runs from the 20th of January until the 20th of May. It uh, is being shown in Dubai, so we've had lots of visitors. Just to quickly give you a view of the exhibition, what you see at your eye level are artworks and projects by various artists, about 14 of them. But also what you see is a lot of these little references on the walls, little notes and citations. And these citations take the form of photographs stuck with masking tape with a note around them. This is an after party at Nepal Picture Library in 2018. Above, you see a project by Nepal Picture Library called the Feminist Memory Project, which looks at the lives of two women activists who were active in the 60s, 70s, 80s, that have inspired the younger generation of women to take the public sphere and claim it as theirs. What you have also on this wall are citations about Dianita's story, which I will tell you later, about Ritu and Gunem Wasif, who are presented as artists in this exhibition, 
you also have a work by Nida Mehbu, an artist from Pakistan uh, based in Lahore, who talks about the persecution that the Ahmadiyya community faces in Pakistan in the present day, both social and political persecution. And she shares pictures as well as stories, anecdotes in the form of text. Next to it, you also see a letter that she's written, a small message left from her uncle who's based in Dubai, Imran Mahmoud, with whom she's sharing how uh, she misses him because a lot of relatives and people from that community have been leaving Pakistan. The exhibition carries a lot of such personal stories, such as here we have Bulu Dungana's work, uh, where she creates a series of self-portraits, all colored by red, very intense portraits, talking about the kind of inner worlds and the kind of frustration one feels as a single woman in Pakistan, in Nepal, who is constantly being asked the question, why she's not married, why she's still single. The exhibition has this interesting strain of red continuing with, here we have a work by Pratik Sarka, and Pratik is an artist based in Dhaka. He's created this work called Origin in 2016. It, it assumes the form of a portal in this exhibition, a reference that Arundhati Rowan made to the pandemic in April 2020, that the pandemic is really like a portal and we all will be going through it and seeing what's on the other side. So we have to imagine the future we want to inhabit from here on. It was a work made much before the pandemic, but Sohrab was interested in bringing this reference in as into a photography show, which usually is about light, because photography as a medium is about writing or inscribing with light. But here the light takes the form of a portal. We have works by Katrin Koning, who is an artist from Germany, who was in Cambodia for many years and now in Australia. She puts together photographs and videos from her mobile phone. And you kind of look down on this video installation just the way you look down on your mobile phone screens all the time these days and immerse yourself in the duration of the mobile picture. Talking about immersions, the next work is a video installation by Gwyneth Blossett, based in Taka as well, who has been looking at photographs of old Taka and finding a lot of solitude in them and a lot of quiet in them as opposed to the Taka that we imagine today as one of the most densely populated cities in the world. Munim does something very interesting when he creates videos because he's looking at old photographs and he sees where those photographs are going to take him. And that's almost like staying with a musical note, to stay with one musical note and see where it's going to take you, which musical realms will it make you travel into. Um, talking about musical realms, talking about where photographs take you, a work by Sean Lee called Two People is presented in this exhibition. Sean is based in Singapore and he noticed his parents were slowly drifting apart even though they lived together. And he picked up photography early on really as a way to play games with them in order to make them touch one another. Maybe that might rekindle an intimacy. So the photograph not as a medium of capturing, but rather as a medium of inviting people to act in a certain way, of acting intimate in a certain way. So Ram intersperses this with his own photographs, family photographs taken by his parents, his mother, his father, uh, his relatives, his family friends, which, in which he himself is inscribed in the stories. And these stories of families run through in this exhibition because it also, also talks about not just the outer world that photographers capture, but their own inner lives. And those inner lives are intertwined in so many ways by the multiple relationships you have that continue sometimes and sometimes discontinue. A work by Jaising Nageswaran based in Tamil Nadu, who talks about uh, the relationship he's had with the community back in his hometown village in Tamil Nadu, which often faces a lot of uh, violence because of uh, caste politics and Dalit oppression. And he shares these stories, inscribing them onto the photographic image, which look like posters, but they're actually a gesture of obliterating the image. We also have works by Farabulla, a sound installation, which is interesting because it is a work that suggests that images don't just reside in a visual domain, but also in an oral and sound domain. Because a lot for Sodrab and many photographers, photography is not just a medium of capturing visuals, it is a medium of observation, and we observe through listening as much as we observe through seeing. So a lot of photographs therefore are taken as you move around the world listening to stories, listening and finding things. Uh, Satish Kumar, whose photographs you're seeing right now, 
is someone who's moving with the camera all the time. His series called Town Boy that he's been making since 2010 has him moving around with a camera everywhere he goes, taking pictures. Some of these pictures are not even classically formatted. Some of these pictures are taken on used film rolls. And so you can see the very material substrate or the material surfaces on which photographs reside, on which images are captured. Ashwarya Rinpoche, based in Texas right now, studying there, but uh, but of uh, but who is based in South South India, also Tamil Nadu, where she's been visiting the northeast of India, and in her visits there, she was interested in the in folklore, a myth called Kadinge, which is about restoring natural balance, and in in the northeast of India, where she's been visiting, there's a lot of sand mining going on. So along with children, they come the series of photographs that talks about this mythology, this folklore. The exhibition really, in a way, is not just an inventory, but rather an itinerary, multiple itineraries meeting one another. Ashwarya moves from uh, uh, South India to Northeast India and is now based in, uh, in Austin, Texas. So Rav himself keeps traveling to all of these places, to Cambodia, to Nepal, to Bangladesh. All of these artists keep traveling to Cambodia to do these workshops that Anjali House uh, hosts with children who they look after, children who've been orphaned, and who are uh, who are residing there. And a number of photographers have worked with these children, taking pictures that continue to inspire both the children as much as the photographers. So the show really brings together these ideas, and I want to just bring one last citation into this, uh, which is looking at uh, a work by Dainita Singh. And what Dainita does uh, is to create different structures of photo photographs, that the photograph just doesn't remain an image that is framed and hung on a wall, but rather takes the form of a book, takes the form of a museum, structures, uh, all kinds of format and here she made an accordion book in, in case inside a box which was a project titled Center Leather and so Rav used this in this exhibition not as an artwork but rather as a citation because just like for Dainita that photography is a medium of address of for Saurabh and a number of others who are participating in this and also those who are not presented this exhibition photography is a medium of address it's a medium of expressing to someone, having a dialogue with someone. And this, this work of Dainita really captures that somewhere because a number of people have been in dialogue with Dainita themselves as well as much as with each other. So on that note, I'm going to, or if I may, I'm going to add one more work perhaps because it's also about addressing. It's also about coming together and creating images, which is a work by Zaritu Sattar, a Dhaka-based artist. She's created this work in 2016 called The Lost Tune, Harano Sur. And Harano Sur brings together 65 harmonium players trying to find one common note on their distuned harmoniums. It's an interesting analogy, thinking about photographs, that when hundreds of photographers are trying to tune themselves, trying to find that one note, that one moment, but what do you end up having a polyphony of notations, a polyphony of sounds that, that come together to form the world. And I think this exhibition really captures that polyphony of what brings people together, binds people together, finding different notes on the same field. The field that is a fragile map of interconnectedness that they are producing. On that note, I thank you. A lot of this information is available on our website. There's a beautiful essay by Sohrab that he's written for this exhibition also titled Growing Like a Tree, that can be found on the Ishara website. Uh, you can log in on www.ishara.org and get more information. If you need any more information from me directly or from the foundation, write to us on info at ishara.org. Thank you very much.